Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. This is another in the continuing series of how to play Global War 1936 to 1945. And we're continuing our section on the political situations in the game. So this video will be about the Chinese Civil War. Um, at the start of the 1936 scenario, the, the Chinese, the Communist Chinese, and the Nationalist Chinese uh, had been at war for nine years, and the Communists are losing. <laughs> They've suffered significant losses. Uh, if you're playing the 1939 scenario, then the two sides begin with, uh, with a truce between them. Um, uh, because of the 1937 invasion by the Japanese. Uh, so like if in 39, like in 36, I mean, the J Japan, J Japanese don't have to attack in 1937. It's just that if you're starting in 1937, they're saying that Japan did attack in 1937, or if you're starting in 39. So anyway, um, what, it, what it's all about. Okay, we're, we're looking at China here. Now let's just look, uh, so, we have um, the nationalist forces, and they're the ones in green that you see, all the forces in green here. Uh, but they're the ones with the, the nationalist roundel on them. These other ones here, those are warlord territories. So they're controlled by warlords. They're not controlled by either side uh, when the game begins. Um, and the others are the, the, the brown ones here. There's just two mountain infantry and one militia here. Those are the communists, and they only have one territory there, uh, one mountain territory. One of the things you notice here in China is that just about everything is mountain territories. Like there's some territories down here where they're just mountain borders or, or uh, not mountain territories. Like I think there's only a couple of territories that, that don't have even have so much as a mountain border on them. So it's really tough slogging when you get into China there. The game that I played, uh, the, uh, the the Japanese went to conquer China, and um, it took them a while because it takes a while to get to, to go through mountain territories. I mean, for one thing, they want to be coming over with uh, not with mountain troops but with marines because they're landing them on the shores, right? And it's very important that you use marines. But um, once they get there, then those marines don't fight as good in mountains as as the mountain infantry does, right? So anyway, um, that's, that's who fights in this. So it, uh, it begins, uh, or sorry, um, it began in 1927, so long before this game starts, and it ends when one side is victorious. So when either the, the nationalists take out the communists or the communists take out the nationalists. And you can see that the communists are doing so well. I actually read something online there where a guy was talking about how the, the, the communists won this war. And I'm not sure how they did it, but they managed to do it somehow. Um, so you can also have a truce between the two sides. And that's probably what you'll want to do. I'm not saying for sure, but that's probably what you would want to do. Because uh, uh, you do that if the Japanese or any other foreign power declares war on China. And that would probably be the Japanese, right? Uh, it's not likely Germany is going to come over and pick a fight with China. <laughs> Or, uh, or Italy for that matter, right? So um, um, if, if you do sign that truce, then uh, neither side may attack the other or their territories. If one side retakes the territory from a foreign power, they keep control of it. So let's say Japan takes out uh, this territory up here. Um, then the communists take it back. Well, then the communists get this territory. It doesn't go back to the nationalists, right? Um, so the communists and the, the nationalists can move freely inside of China, including moving in and out of each other's territories. So while they have this truce going on, like these guys can walk right through here, right? They can just keep going and they, they can occupy the same territory as long as they're at truce. Um, and then the truce ends when the last Chinese enemy unit is off the Chinese mainland. And that's exclusive of Formosa and Hainan. So this is uh, Formosa. The Japanese had already taken that out. And uh, Hainan, that's this one right here. So like you could have Chinese forces on there. But uh, uh, once the Chinese mainland has been taken by, uh, or once all the units are off for 
either the communists or the nationalists, then the other side wins, right? Um, wins that uh, war there. And um, sorry, the yeah, the, that's uh, okay. So that's after like the the Japanese have gone, and there's no British in there. There's no anybody in there. It's just those two sides, and then one takes over completely from the other. Then then you get victory, right? Um, so, but there is uh, there is one boat over here, and what would happen if the uh, the communists won? It says losing forces are sub subject to naval capture. Roll a d12. One to four, they are property of the victor. Five to eight, scuttled. And then it says nine to twelve, and it doesn't say anything. <laughs> I'm assuming that means it goes that it would go to the Americans because the Americans are the controlling player. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, and then once that happens, then um, like if you, if you read the rules on, on these guys, then uh, here, let me just grab the, the KMT here. I've got it right here. And the KMT is the National of Japanese. So if you were to win the Civil War, um, do, 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 do. Um, then like I think you can actually build factories and you can start building other types of units on there, right? Uh, you're limited into what you can buy to begin with. Like you've got infantry, mountain infantry, militia, cavalry, artillery, and anti-aircraft. And then uh, once it's constructed a major factory, you can start building the other types of units. But obviously you wouldn't be able to do that because I mean they're not going to have that much money, right? So they can't do that while they're at war with the Japanese. Um, but eventually they can. So let me just talk about the warlords though. Uh, I'm looking at uh, the Chinese card here. It says many regions of China are controlled by regional warlords at the start of the 36th scenario. These semi-autonomous provinces are each marked with their own warlord roundel and individually colored for identification. It says note some low warlords act like neutral countries until aligned. If attacked by the KMT or the, uh, the communists, they do not align with anyone. An attack by a foreign country on a warlord or on the KMT is attack on China and causes all warlords to align with the KMT. So, um, like if it was me um, and I, was, uh, I, I wasn't the Axis, what I would do is just not have a war with each other until China attacked. And then you get all these other forces, right? Um, so, uh, like if if uh, if the nationalists attacked Yunnan here, uh, apparently from what it's saying there, um, they don't align with anybody. So they're just going to say, nope, we're we're going to be warlords for the rest of the game. <laughs> if I'm reading it right. Um, anyway, uh, so that's uh, that's one thing, and then. Um, if you would, if you wanted to, like the victory con conditions there, uh, let's, let's just take a look at the card over here. If you look at the victory conditions here, um, for when, when you're adding up at the end of the game points to see who wins, uh, and the, the nationalists are part of the allies, right? So you score one point if at the end of the game, there are no foreign enemy troops in mainland China. So, uh, and that, that doesn't include the communists, right? Uh, so if there's no Japanese in there, then you get a point. Um, reclaim China. Score one point if uh, China has possession of any two of the following. Jay Hall, Western Manchuria, Eastern Manchuria, Northern Manchuria, or Formosa. And at the start of this scenario, that's these yellow th things. That, they're basically stuff that they've already lost to the, to the Japanese before this game began. And so if you can reclaim those, then you, you score a point if you get two of them. Um, and then defeating the communists, score one victory objective if at the end of the game, there are no CCP units left. So if you can defeat the, the communists, then you get a point. Let me just grab the communist card here. I've got it. Uh, da, da, da. I had it a second ago. Here we are. So they also have uh, um, conditions here. Now, if uh, you can score one, if uh, at the end of the game, the communists 
has more LAN units in China than the nationalists. So you don't actually have to wipe them out. You just have to have more units left than the nationalists do. And you will get a point for the common turn. Um, and the other one is uh, if you expel uh, foreign influence. So you score two if at the end of the game there are no foreign military units from any nation in China or Formosa, um, including Allied and Soviet troops. KMT are not former are, are not uh, foreign units. So that's that's uh, those are the points that you can get at the end of the game for these guys, right? Um, and like you can see, the war status they begin uh, at war with uh, the nationalist Chinese. KMT is the nationalist Chinese, right? Uh, they can't research technology until the KMT and all foreign powers are expelled from China, and it has constructed a major factory. So you can't put a factory on China if you're either side. Um, like uh, that's uh, with these guys as well. Um, the, you would have to expel everybody and the, the communists. And once China is completely in the hands of one side or the other, then they can build a factory. And once they've done that, then they can start building units, including boats and tanks and all that stuff, right? But uh, those... <laughs> See, to me, it seems kind of unlikely. But I tell you, it'd be an awfully interesting game if that did happen, wouldn't it? If one side won the Civil War and they were able to get rid of the Japanese. Like, I would, I would imagine the only way that's going to happen is if Japan made some concerted effort to go across the Pacific and take the United States out. Like they wanted to attack the, the mainland the United States or something like that. So in a case like that, I could see waging the Civil War. But why would you start attacking each other? If, if Japan was piling units up over here, right? Uh, I can't see why you would do that. Like to me, it would make more sense to pile up all your units, don't, don't, don't attack each other. And then when Japan come in, then both of you fight Japan. But like I said, it could be different. It could be that Japan decides they want to come down here after Australia, or maybe they want to go and go after the United States. Um, and if that's the case, then there you go. You know, um, then have that or <laughs> go ahead and have your nice little civil war. <laughs> but, but anyway, like I said, that would be fun playing a game like that and, uh, and seeing the board. Uh, if you have a story about something like that, if you play this game and one side or the other has won the civil war, let me know how it happened uh, or what, what you did after that. Like, did you build a factory? Um, how did they, uh, what did they look like at the end of the game? Uh, you can leave that in the comment section if that's ever happened to you. Anyway, that is the Chinese Civil War. So take care, everyone. General Hand Grenade out.